Hey, what's up you guys? Bart here. I have a new TST Garage episode for you. We're working on our project bike here. It's a 2020 MT-03. We actually bought this bike for this project. We're gonna be doing a massive amount of conversions on it. We already did the integrated taillight and fender eliminator. And now we're looking at these whiskers here. I have to say, they're a vast improvement of the, over the traditional Yamaha orange pumpkins. They are LED. They have changed the shape quite a bit, but I mean, look at this robo fascia here. I think it deserves a little bit more than these antenna that make it look like an ant. I say maybe we could do something about that. We do have these flush pod signals that we call mech GTRs. We actually designed these specifically for the Yamaha MT line, and this is a member of the MT line, so these will fit on it very, very nicely. Now here's the deal. They do have one single LED. It's a very high power LED firing through a very sophisticated lens array. It actually, in brightness, it'll rival these. The other really cool thing about them is the accent light ring. Through the use of our accent lighting modules that fit in the inside of this signal system, just like this, it's very easy to do. You plop this in, plug and play connection, and you have a light ring that lights up in the color of your choice. So on our website, tsdindustries.com, you'll notice that we have several number of different colors for you to choose. It really is your choice. And anytime down the line, you wanna choose a different color. Uh, they don't cost a lot and they're really easy to install. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about the geometry of this signal. We've developed this to look very analogous with uh, the MT line. All the lines and, and symmetry and uh, the design language of these motorcycles demanded something of this nature with the robot eye look and also like a broken up airfoil. So we spent a lot of time developing this. We went through many iterations of design and we arrived at this geometry. And um, I personally like them. I'm a little biased because I designed them, but we sell so many of these things it just means people do love them. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to install them. It's pretty simple. If you guys follow along, we can get started and start wrenching. Let's go. Let's get started by removing this shroud here. This will require the removal of these two fasteners. Four millimeter Allen will do the job. When these come out, there are rubber grommets left behind. The rubber grommets also have these sleeves in there. If those are loose on your bike, please make sure that you re retain them on our bike. They're actually pretty tight. Now this shroud does have a tab that goes into a window down here. We'll need to push this forward to clear that tab. This is the tab, this is the window. We do have this rubber piece. Now in my previous tries, this rubber piece has slipped off a little bit. I like to make sure that it's bottomed out. That way we're ready for reinstallation later. Now, we have all our wiring here. We'll need to undo this boot and find the plugs. However, the actual physical installation will require that we get under here. Now, we can do this several ways. I've developed a minimally invasive way that requires the removal of the gauge cluster, and then we have enough clearance and access to these areas. We could potentially remove this whole thing and really dig in there, but that's, that's more involved and like the speedy way. So we're gonna remove these three fasteners, one, two, and three, all Phillips head. Those are the ones that attach the gauge to a steel bracket here. They should come off with this large-ish washer. I've had this get stuck to the grommet and if you leave it there, when you start moving the cluster around, it may dislodge and fall in there. So make sure you get that out with the screw. Now, these screws here are on an axis that requires the screwdriver to be off axis. We just don't have enough access here. 
So if you guys want to protect your plastics here, in case you do end up touching while you're rotating, I recommend using two layers of blue tape. I'll put that here. This is just standard blue painter's tape. You could potentially make use of electrical tape, duct tape, whatnot. All right, plastics protected. Let's continue. After we get these three screws out, it's pretty simple. Just pull it up. I like to take it off. You could potentially leave it hanging here, but then you have to work around it. I don't like working around something that has connections made of 26 gauge wire, so I'm gonna take it off. There is a button, you press down, it makes a click when it unlocks, and you pull that connector out. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver to push that connector out. I do not pull connectors out by wires. You could strain them, break them, something like that. We don't wanna run that risk. Okay, so I'm just gonna have my wiring off to the side here, and I'm gonna try to gain access to my actual connectors for my signaling. This is a large boot here that we need to disassemble. It does have a tab towards the rear of this whole thing. The tab needs to clear this connector, but the connector is actually captive on a tab so let's grab a screwdriver to work this boot under and back of this steel bracket this will give me enough access to this locking feature on the plug and i will need to use needle nose pliers to squeeze together the locking feature, which I'll show you after I remove it. All right, so this is the feature that holds this connector in a round hole here. It does have these wings. When you compress these wings together, it actually fits through the window and comes out, you let them go, it works like a dart. Push it in, they click, and you're good to go. So now that this connector's out, we're gonna retrieve this boot and all of this opens up on our signaling, signaling system connectors. One is gray and the other one that lives below is black. Once we have these guys clear and out, we can trace back where they go. We have a cable management holder here that's part of the shrouding just need to clear that. Sometimes when you push it off plane, it's the easiest thing to do. So this side is clear. We can actually disconnect this, push down on this button, should click, and it comes out. The signal is ready to come out. The routing here is a little bit more difficult. And again, it goes through cable management clip system comes out to here. We'll need to disconnect this guy, black one, click, get this out from this mess and get it out of the cable management around this. And now we are left with signals disconnected and ready to come out physically. Now this is very difficult to demonstrate properly on video, so I'm going to remove one of these signals and show you how the locking system works so that you know exactly what I did in there to, to remove my signal. Yamaha, Yamaha signals have this genius way of mounting to the bike. I really, really like the way this was engineered. It's very universal to all Yamaha models. I believe 2000 and up, you put this rubber boot through the orifice of a signal well, 
that rests, the plastic rests in here. There's a jam piece that goes here and jams into these windows of this boot. And that holds it actually pretty tightly against this surface. And it enables a little bit of movement in the system so that should you hit something, it has a little bit of give. So I really like this fastener system for our signals. We didn't go with the same thing, but we do have a pretty sophisticated, nice ratcheting system instead of the traditional screw fasteners that other companies use and we've used on numerous other projects. I just wanted something a little bit cooler, a little bit simpler. You get this guy on with the teeth first against the inside surface of wherever you're mounting and just press it in. And just progressively press this in until you get it to bottom out on the surface that you're mounting to. And it has springy teeth that you preload and that holds, holds this in pressure so that it doesn't move around on you. If for some reason on your bike you have the issue like we've encountered on MT09s where the plastic thickness between the teeth and, uh, and the mounting surface here is a little bit thinner than our last step in teeth and you have just a little bit of movement we equip you with these rubber o-rings that go in between here on the inside of the mounting surface and they are actually soft rubber so they increase the friction that this whole system experiences i'm basically just gonna throw these on on this bike by default because i just like the extra damping too uh, and it, they don't hurt anything. So I'll show you how all this comes together and um, we'll be good to go. In case you ever need to back these out, you just also do it progressively by prying up on these ratcheting ramps and they unlock from the teeth on the body of the signal and it's fairly straightforward. So for this particular installation, we've chosen Hyper White for our accent color, you could choose anything else. It's really up to you, whatever matches your bike. We like hyper white here, and we sell the most of hyper white and then amber. So that's what we're gonna go with. So like I said, next step is fairly straightforward. I already have my accent light inserted and connected from when I showed this detail to you in the intro. And just thread it through from the outside. Obviously you want the lens facing forward. Then if you're using the rubber O-ring that goes on first, and then your ratcheting fastener, making sure the teeth go towards the signal. And I will need to get this O-ring around the body of the signal there. That's a little cumbersome in this tight little space. I'm gonna grab a flathead screwdriver and push that all the way to bottom against the mounting surface from the inside. And now my ratcheting ring with the larger side facing forward goes on in there. And like I mentioned before, we do not ever wanna pull by the wires. Once you start getting the ratcheting teeth engaged, I recommend going a little bit at a time until you bottom them out against that rubber o-ring and you put pressure from the outside against your mounting surface and just keep working that in until you don't have any movement in the external signal parts so here we're mounted really nicely we have made our physical installation i'm going to get the wire under this fastener boss and around here, kind of like what we had from the factory. On this side, that's the right side of the motorcycle, so we're gonna be connecting into this. We have three bullet connectors that don't match this OEM plug. Don't worry, we've equipped you in this kit with an OEM connector that will go perfectly. Plug and play with this. We don't wanna connect it just yet. Wanna make these connections with the bullets. You may wonder why we didn't just pre-wire this plug on these signals. We've actually universalized these signals and started selling 
different harnesses so that we could fit different bikes. This is why you're getting two pieces and have to make this connection. Simple though, it's all color coded. Match the colors. Make sure you get full engagement on the bullet connectors. Then we have these insulating caps that fit together on both sides. Make sure you slide them together so they lock. All right, so now, while we are 100% sure that all these wires are insulated and they won't touch, we'll plug in the connector and test our functions. We have our hyper white color ring, we're good to go there. And we have signals, so we're good to go there. I highly recommend, and if I were the police, I would re require this step. We see customers blow fuses all the time because they do not lock down on these insulator caps. When running around the streets, going over bumps, things shift around in, in this whole area, they may come off at some point and you may cause a short circuit. So I always lock these things down using electrical tape or I don't know, some, some other method I always use electrical tape myself. This just ensures that we never run the risk of having a problem. And it's just a smart choice. This also prevents water penetration into these unsealed connections. And um, you know, under these boots, you don't really see a lot of water unless you're going through a monsoon, uh, but it's nice to have the extra peace of mind knowing that water will not be penetrating into this winding of electrical tape. Just like that, you have a nice tight little package, fully sealed up. From this point forward, it's basically just a game of figuring out the best routing so that all the cables are managed properly, the connectors are in their boots, and all the wiring's out of the way. What I'm gonna do though, is connect all my wires. So that requires me replacing this signal also. That way I have a full view of the things I need to hide away. So let's quickly go for the other side. It's basically the same set of steps. So what I've done here is disconnected this connector. It is not necessary. This is just to be able to show you guys what I'm doing here without obstruction. I also locked on these pliers so that this boot is out of the way. It is the same exact thing, mainly for presentation purpose. All right, let's get our wires to start hiding. So, this cable management device and this cable management device is where the OEM runs were. We're gonna make use of those again. All right, I think I like to go under that. So I'm gonna disconnect quickly here and reconnect under. And this black connector can go in the second tier down of this boot. Then I'll get this wire around this boss, get it in its captive spot. Let's make sure that these wires are all flowing downwards so that they don't show. All right. That's pretty good here. 
or again tangled. I'll remove this. All right. I think that's pretty good here. I'm gonna still make use of that bottom tier for all this stuff. Looks to be spacious enough to contain most of this. I do believe that this bulk will need to go outside. Otherwise we won't have enough room for all the connectors in there. I will once again use that cable management device there and just tuck these wires back there and we're good to go on that side. This connector lives in here and our gray connector lives in here. Cable management device here, good to go there. And I will loop this in here one time and send it back to this area where I was tucking the wires in before just like that and let's see if our cable management device here can contain one more set I'll send them in there and just like that I think we're good here I'm going to get this boot around that catch for our white connector and can go ahead and plug all these things back in like that and this dark clip feature just goes back into that window that holds it and we are pretty good here this is really nice tight all the wires are captive there's nothing loose i'm just going to test it one more time making sure i didn't disconnect anything when I was monkeying with the wires, all the functions are there. So we're good to go for reinstallation. Now the tape is still here, as you can see. We are going to have to get the fasteners in on axis properly into these bosses. These are self-threading screws cutting into, I believe, ABS plastic. It's either ABS or some kind of polyethylene or something. Regardless, these can strip out. You do not want to get them in off axis. And our tool is actually getting in here a little bit off axis. So I'll show you a trick how to get that lined up and fastened properly. Let's plug it in first. Click, get the boot around the plug area. And the left bottom is the trickiest one of them. I'm going to hold my cluster here off angle, but with the boss aligned in that rubber. And this will enable me to start my thread on axis with the boss. That way I won't cross thread anything. So it's a cumbersome getting in there. Very tight spot. All right. If the thread goes in easy, you've done a good job. If you're having tightness, back out and try again. You do not want to cross thread them. It's not the end of the world, but it's a new bike. Why wreck it? Once you start that thread on axis, it continues to be on axis. As it pulls tight, it'll just be your tool that comes off axis a little bit. If you maintain good pressure on the tool, you will not strip out the head of the fastener. And the last one here is really easy. You can get on axis when it's fully fastened, just like that. All right, so the last step here will be to get this shroud back on here. As you can see, I have cleared all the wires from this area, got everything tucked and flush, and I have my rubber on this tab bottomed out. We have this tubular, tabby thing that fits in this interference window and that needs to all go in together at the same time so that we have proper alignment for our screw bosses. Telltale sign of not getting all those uh, features in will be that your bosses do not align with your grommets. 
and just replace this hardware and we are done. Man, I really love the change of look that these signals produce. Just look at these things. They look like they really belong with this fascia. Here's the contrast. These are kind of cool. They stick out way, way, way too much and look kind of like ear antenna, something like that. And light these guys up. That is a really nice effect. Now our hyper white doesn't really match this hyper white. So you may consider going with a slightly different color. Here's a little test of the brightness of the signals. You can probably tell it's tough to capture that on a camera sensor and display it to you on your computer or mobile device screen. But these things are really, really bright and the cone of light is pretty broad. I know some of you guys out there are really kind of ragging on this whole design. I've seen a lot of comments on MTO3 videos about how people hate this design. I, for one, really love it. To me, it looks like some kind of a robot. And now we've enhanced that look with several more, more robotic features. If you guys agree, check out tstindustries.com where you'll find these parts. If you disagree, drop us a comment, tell us how much you hate it. We wanna hear it all. We use what you guys say to steer us in the direction of what we're gonna design next. So thank you for the good and the bad, the thumbs up and the thumbs down, all that stuff. We appreciate it all and we'll discuss it with you. Anyway, tstindustries.com is where you'll find these parts and a whole catalog of other parts for this bike and other bikes that you may have. I hope you'll check us out. Again, tstindustries.com, ride safe, see you later.